Hey guys, what's going on? This is Liam from Liam Subsonitis, and right now we're going to get into exactly how blue light and non-native EMF causes tinnitus. So just so you know, before you're, you know, we get into this and you start wondering, you might be a bit confused. Blue light is any man-made light. So the light from my screen right now, um, a light from a street lamp, um, a light coming off your TV, a little red standby thing, anything that's not man-made, okay? With the exception of fire, candles are okay. Um, what is non-native EMF? Non-native EMF is essentially radiation, positive ions, okay, coming from electronic, mostly devices, such as the Wi-Fi from your electricity and the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is one of the worst. Um, microwave, oven, um, TV, uh, things like that. So basically anything man-made is what we're talking about here. Electronics, Wi-Fi, that sort of stuff. So now I'm going to get into how it causes tinnitus and how it can it can weaken your body so that when you get sick or you get stressed, tinnitus will kick in, unfortunately. So there's many facets to that. So how do you process noise? Let's really quickly, um, I'm just going to you know hammer through this and try not to get too off on a tangent and start talking about, because I find it really interesting, so I can talk about it for hours, but I'll just uh, simplify it. So you've got this lady here who hears a, a noise. That's energy, that's vibration, okay? And it goes through your three bones. These are real, um, the bones, but this is just zoomed in very, very much. So, so you've got the uh, malleus, incus, and stapes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, malleus, incus, and stapes. And they amplify noise by 20 times. And they push on, okay, this part here. And then that turns into electricity. And that electricity gets funneled through neurotransmitters into your brain, where your brain processes that electricity in the phenomenon of noise. Now, let's just break that down even sim more simply, even simple way, good English. Hey, process noise. So these are actual um, hair cells in your ears. So this is, if you imagine, this is inside your um, cochlea, okay? This yellow stuff here represents water. The type of water in your cochlea is lymph, okay? Now, these are the hair cells here. And as the water gets pushed, like seaweed on the on ocean floor, they move with it. Now, when they move with it, they utilize potassium ions to um, electrify the signal. The vibration turns into a specific electrical signal. And it goes through a neurotransmitter through the nerve into your brain, the part of your brain that processes noise. That's how it works, okay? Rewatch the video if you don't get it. If you don't get it, don't comment, just do your own research, okay? We're really here just to teach you stuff you can apply, which I'll teach you at the end. If you're interested, you can take a screenshot of this. This is the uh, mitochondria on the left inside of the hair cells. That's how it works, because we're going to be talking about mitochondria. If you don't know what mitochondria is, Google it. I'm sure most people just want to learn what to do. So this is your mitochondria. So you have inside the mitochondria, you have the water, okay, here, and you have the ATP and then you have three electrons. Now, this is a very simplified version. It does not look anything like this, not even close in real life, but this is just for the purpose of you learning, okay? Google the pictures yourself. Mitochondrial water, salt water, by the way, everybody needs salt. Um, Celtic salt is the best. The electrons, three electrons in every mitochondria, okay? So let's break down, um, actually, sorry, let me go back here. So. Here's your hair cells, right? And there's mitochondria in your hair cells. What happens is the mitochondria, okay? It is the mitochondria's um, role to generate energy, enough energy so that this can happen, okay? The endoplasmic reticulum comes into play too, but the mitochondria serves the biggest purpose, okay? It's, it's, it's a communicator, okay? It's the middleman of all this situation. It generates the energy that makes this possible, this process here. So where were we? So how can blue light fuck up your mitochondria? And how can non-native EMF mess up your mitochondria? So let's break it down. Non-native EMF, okay, dehyd dehydrates the mitochondrial water, okay? And by the way, just a fun fact, the electricity used here are potassium ions, okay, which are messed up by um, non-native EMF. Um, and the communique, between the water and the uh, mitochondria, the mitochondria and mitochondrial water, is also potassium ions. So the function of this happening is very, very similar to the, similar to the function of hearing. Okay, you might have to watch this video twice. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I possibly can, but it's very complicated, okay? So non-native 
EMF dehydrates mitochondria. How does it do that? It microwaves your cells, okay? If those Bluetooth headpieces, talking on the phone all the time, using ear, using earbuds and electricity going to your ears, um, being around an apartment building with Wi-Fi, having a satellite dish in your front yard, um, cruising around in a car with, you know, this high-tech car with all these new gadgets and Bluetooth and whatever the hell is going on with it and all the radio and the satellite radio, that's terrible. It's the worst thing you could possibly do. It will decrease the amount of water and here's why that matters. Um, you know what, we'll get to that at the end of the video. So I was going to say, remind me, but this isn't live. Um, positive ions, okay, from non-native EMF. So just imagine a Wi-Fi router, just radiation. Strip the electrons, okay, from the mitochondria. You need electrons for power. This, these electrons are where the energy is stored. Crucial, okay? And they also dehydrate the mitochondria. And just as a bonus here, I added this in. Halide-based drugs, okay, strip electrons as well. So a lot of you got tinnitus from Roaccutane, benzodiazepines, um, whatever else, okay? Ask your doctor, even if you, if, you, if you have tinnitus now and you're thinking about taking drugs to deal with it, think about that, okay? So I want you to ask if they have any halides in them. Those would be fluoride, bromine. Um, those are the main ones. So you look on the periodic table, the halogens, all of them are really, really toxic except for iodine. Iodine is an essential trace mineral that every single cell needs. So what was I going to come back to? Dehydration, mitochondria. So how does... How, how do you charge up your mitochondria to work properly? Okay, I'll explain. You use light. So out of the three electrons, two of them are powered from light and one of them is powered from food. So light is arguably two times more important for tinnitus, okay, than is food. I talk a lot about food, but if you're not getting the right light, then you have problems. Now there's two facets to getting the right light. There's getting the wrong kind of light out of your life and there's bringing the right kind of light in, okay? I've read, I've read quite a few books on um, alternative healing and how people would heal stuff in the past. And one of the themes that always comes up is they would take people up into the mountains and be closer to the sun. They would strip them naked and they would just sit there naked on the ground, grounding, okay? And just sit there for six hours a day in the sun and just basically get as much energy into their mitochondria so the mitochondria could spin fast, the ATP can spin, fa spin faster, generate more energy and speed up the healing. Obviously, they were fasting as well. That, that just goes without saying. So, um, we'll go back a slide. Uh, feeling good is not enough. And I was going to make a video on the science of um, mindfulness and meditation and why it's so good. It actually reduces what's called the heteroplasmy rate of the mitochondria. So, you want mitochondria to be able to communicate with themselves. So they need to be this shape to be able to do that. When you're stressed, okay, or you eat shit food, or apoptosis takes place, or you're stripping the electrons using drugs, or you're not getting enough sunlight, or you're getting the bad kind of light, they take this form, okay? Then what's called ECT, electron uh, chain tunneling, cannot take place, they can't communicate, and this process gets inhibited, okay? That's how it works. The potassium ions can't communicate. So to really summarize what I was saying, um, and while I'll go on what to do now, get more sunlight, okay? That's it. Cut out the bad lights, cut out the social media, cut out the phones, cut out the TV, read instead, read by candlelight. Um, I, personally, there should never be a light on in your home. There's no reason to because you should be going to bed as soon as it's dark. That's, that's as simple as that. Deal with the boredom, you'll be fine. Or read by candlelight. And food, you know, even though I say, don't just go, like, here's a problem that I see a lot. Like, people always will look for a confirmation bias. Like, oh, you might go, oh, well, there we go. I can just eat like shit and just drink and I can fix the light. No, that's going to slow, that's going to slow down your process incredibly. And that would be an incredibly stupid thing to do. Because here are the answers, the multiple answers. Do them both, okay? Do both of them. Uh, but this is just something I've been looking at for quite a few months and researching it, testing it with people inside my inner group. And so I just wanted to share this with you. Um, but as I was saying, when you're stressed out, you have a direct effect on your ECT, electron chain funneling. It's a physiological effect. So, when, so you need to avoid stressful situations. Just avoid social media, basically. That's the main thing. Um, avoid tinnitustalk.com. Um, avoid negative YouTube videos. Um, avoid basically any website that's ever about tinnitus because all of them are shit. 
They're all like, there's no cure, but we're, there's, there's a breakthrough stuff. This is, as far as I'm concerned, I won't call it a cure because I, I don't think I can even allow it to say that, but, I, but it, this is it. Like, just this is it. This is how you process noise. This is how problems happen. The ringing is, is, is when your body's telling you this isn't working, we're dying too quickly. You're not sleeping properly. Autophagy is not taking place when we sleep. So you've got to do the manual thing, which is you've got to start fasting and do what you can't do when you're asleep because you're drinking coffee and you're... Um, inhibiting your body's melatonin and cortisol proper function and it's just a catastrophe okay so this is what you do and this is how uh, blue light causes tonight so i hope this helped um, and also if you want to see me talk live about this and get get way more in depth click below this go to liam subsonitis forward slash tonight's boot camp it's totally free the last couple of ones talks i've given live have been going for like three hours but i'm gonna condense it way down to like an hour and a half and just put like uh, you know the real meat and potatoes in it so if you're interested in that um, you can lock in a time it should go to your time zone but it's completely free just click below there and yeah if you've got any questions you can ask me on a frequently asked questions sorry the live FAQ after the presentation it's, it's a live webinar so yeah hope you enjoyed